Hi, welcome to the Brick Filmers Guild podcast hosted by us, the Four Monkeys. On this podcast, we had the pleasure of chatting with Thomas Evans, a forlorn creature. Thomas is from Brisbane, Australia, and has been animating since 2009. His YouTube channel, Forlorn Creature, currently has over 42,000 subscribers and 16 million views. He's a two-time Thack winner and current nominee for 2015 BFG Brick Filmer of the Year. In 2015, Thomas produced three five- to seven-minute episodes of Lego Minecraft Creepers. Two of them are featured on the official Lego YouTube channel and have accumulated over seven million views. We'd also like to give a special mention to BrickFlix, which is a comprehensive guide to making your own stop-motion Lego movies. It's over 200 pages of useful brick filming tips. This book will show you how to make a stop-motion movie using little more than a camera, a computer, and your own Lego collection. Much of the photography in the book was produced by the amazing Paul Hollingsworth of Digital Wizard Studios. It's definitely worth checking out. So, without further ado, here's our conversation with Thomas Evans. Thomas, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good day, mate. Thanks for calling me up a gum tree. How's it going? Oh, awesome. Good day. It's actually, um, it was Australia Day today. That's right. Happy Australia Day. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> just in time, right? 30 more minutes? Yeah. Oh, actually, no. I, hang on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for another 30 minutes, it's still Australia Day. Oh, yes, still, so still I Tuesday, made it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you even still say good day, even though it's like good night? <laughs> or is it good night? Um, I don't know. Like, personally, I don't actually say good day a whole lot. Like, that's that's not something that I really sort of do. Um, I usually just say, like, hey or hi <laughs> or hello. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, li- I like to differentiate between the good morning and good night, I guess. <laughs> but um, but what, good day really does over? sound great. Yeah. Especially from a true, you know, Aussie. It just has a such such a ah, such an Australian ring to it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um it is eight thirty in the morning here. Oh jeez, okay. <laughs> uh, on Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday. Yep. We're early morning yep. people. Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'd like to be an early morning person, but I think lately I'm more of a late night person. Wait till you I get old. That is an early morning like... person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I was going to um, have some shrimp on the barbie for you, but then you told me that you guys don't even do that. Yeah, well, like, uh, for one thing, we don't call them shrimp. We call them prawns. Um, and uh, and we rarely barbecue prawns. Like, the, the more Australian thing to say would have, like, a snag on the barbie. Um, uh, and that's, like, just, like, we like to have barbecues with sausages. Sausages is, is really popular because um, uh, they're cheap. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. And so I did have to um, research to see where that even came from, because obviously people in this country, <laughs> that that's such a big thing. And, and it yeah. came from uh, Paul Hogan. Yep. Um, was, that, was that one ad where he was uh, right. like Australian tourism? Exactly. Yep. Oh, so that goodness. really uh, caught on. So come and say yep. good day and, you know, I'll have a shrimp on the bar before you. And yeah, yeah that <laughs> it's really... all lies. <laughs> I know. No, because that's what we think. I learned yep. something. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was very interesting. I learned it, too, so that was very cool. Hmm. So I guess we should probably get started with brick filming things, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you are the youngest person that we have interviewed so far, and also the, the furthest away as well. I, I'm really, yeah. I'm, I'm chuffed to bits about this connection. You sound great. Yeah, yeah, it's good, especially after uh, last week, which is... Uh bit of a disaster <laughs> it was so obviously that was a connection issue which we have since gotten corrected so um yep. if you don't mind answering how old are you i am 18 oh you're good. Uh, yeah just, just a little um, bit younger than me wow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. that that's very exciting though it's such a such a cool thing uh and, you... cool and how old were you when you started brick filming um hmm uh, i th- i think Officially, I think I was probably about 12 when I started brick filming. I think I might have been doing stuff a little bit before that, maybe when I was like 10 or 11. But I think 12 is when I made my first YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, 
So, and, yeah, and that, that was, uh, you guys probably, you guys may or may not remember uh, Lego Spaceman. We, we do, do remember. remember. Yep. <laughs> I was actually on your website before. I am uh, fan club member number 62. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, no, I, was, I, was, I was a big fan of Galactic Smugglers back in the day. Oh, uh, I... um, so, I'm about halfway or a third of the way through the next one, but it's uh, it's taking a backseat. Oh, cool. Wait, so so you actually, you're still working on it? I'm still oh, yeah. working on it. I've got some of it filmed. Uh, uh, Gareth uh, has already given us lines about two years ago <laughs> um, <laughs> for the next one. I think it's uh, Galactic Smugglers 9, um, and I've, I've even written a couple past that, um, but I, I just got to get motivated. <laughs> it's our baby, so yeah, you know we always have our baby that we'll have to tend to. It just don't have yeah. time to tend to it as much. But it was real fun to do, and I, I hope to make more. Mm. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I definitely look forward to that. Cause okay. it's, uh, yeah, no, I love those. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, did you did you just change the name of your channel, or did you create a new channel when you switched to Forlorn? Um, no, I created a new channel. Okay. Um, so, like, my old channel is still there, and it's still got all my dodgy animations on it. So, if you if you want to see where I came from, just look up uh, Lego Spaceman. Okay. One word on YouTube. <laughs> um, and, yeah. No, see, I think it's great yeah. to do that. It's always very interesting to see people, how they first started and how they have improved over the years. I think that's... I always tell people, don't ever delete your old videos, because it's just... It's really... Uh, it's fun to see. And it's nice to know, yeah. no, not everybody starts out this... Uh, amazing and, and talented. You really do have to work at it, and it's nice to see how you get better through the years. Oh, and, yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, and there's always something special stuff. about the old ones anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I get some, uh, I get comments and stuff from people sometimes, like, wanting me to check out their videos, and sometimes, I actually, uh, when I have time, like, I, I do, and it's always really fun because you see these people, and they're just starting out, you know, brick filming. It's like, oh, this is what this is like pretty much like what I was like, you know, five or six years ago, you know, and I comment like, you know, if you keep doing stuff, you know, you, you can you can get really, really good at this. Absolutely. And I suspect within the next 10 or 15 years, there's going to be several famous real filmmakers uh, that got their start doing brick filming, which is which is wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Especially um, considering like what's happening with uh, brick filmers right now. I'm noticing a lot doing uh, like commissioned work and stuff like you've interviewed both the. Uh, Paul and Kevin and the stuff that they're doing is is really cool um absolutely and, uh, and, and James as well actually and and uh and Zach actually they're all doing like commissioned work and so uh and, they like, are, they're, they're getting really good yeah they're mm -hmm. definitely really good have you done any yeah. commission work yet I've I did my first piece of commission work uh a few weeks ago actually I, I snuck it in um I did a 15 second video for two pyros okay um so yeah, it was the Ashley Marie New Year's video, and it was basically like her drawing Happy New Year with a sparkler. Oh, that's um, adorable! I got to see that. And yeah, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, that was pretty exciting. Um, I'm hoping to do some more commission work in the future. Uh, it was a lot of fun uh, working with figures that had knees that you could bend. <laughs> that's a good and bad thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at least they're bigger, though, so it's a, maybe yeah. a little bit easier to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, it's it's a bit it's a bit um it's a little bit more complicated than animating Lego figures, but I've been wanting to get a bit more complicated mm -hmm. uh, lately. I've been reading a lot about like traditional animation and stuff, and I got a book called uh, uh, the Survivors Kit, the An the Animator Survival Kit, something like that, um, by one of the guys who worked on who who framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, oh cool. wow! Um, and there's yeah, and there's and there's just so much great stuff about animation in there that really like sort of changed the way that I think about animation, and um, uh, and so yeah, whatever I do uh, next is probably going to take a lot of the stuff that I've learned from that book. So, See, so there's a good, good tip right there. That's nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, don't be afraid to to look into other types of animation. Um, like I've recently. Uh, started having a look at like animes and stuff like that, like uh, particularly like 1980s science fiction anime stuff. Um, uh, just just because it's really interesting to see how you know uh, other people, other types of animation apply all the same basic principles, um, you know, to create movement. Mm. I'm loving this. I'm enjoying hearing you speak. <laughs> hearing you speak because not counting our our last week trial, um, I've never heard you speak before, so. So this yeah, is nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well I don't usually voice act in my films, which is uh 
probably something weird that I do. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, I watched, uh, uh, was it Creepers 4, the last one? Mm-hmm. And I, I, was, I was totally expecting to see your name in the credits uh, for, for the voice acting, and it, it wasn't. So um, no. I was surprised. No. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I actually, I think Creepers is part three. I did a couple of the background voices because okay. I had like no time to, to do or to get someone else to do the voices. So I was just like, uh, everyone, everyone on the wall. This is like a really badly sort of delivered line in there. Um, that I did, but uh, all, all the voice actors, uh, I had, uh, Andrew Stein, which is, uh, he's a big music producer on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, Christopher Solaces, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, who does mini live TV and he's, oh, okay. oh, Chris, nice. okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I Skype with him, uh, every now and then he's, uh, he's a really great guy. He is. Yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to do a podcast well. with him sometime in the future. Yeah, you definitely should. He's, uh. Um, is really interesting to talk to, and also like the stuff that he like. I was I was just like amazed by what he did with uh, with Mini Life TV. Like for a while, he was just putting out a video every single week, and like that boggles my mind. Like, yeah, same he here. It's that. crazy. <laughs> yeah, and, was... it's, and it's so great too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we voiced in um, a couple of theirs, and uh, just yeah, it's impressive um, to do that on that level. So, who who did the music for uh, Creepers Four? And well done on um, Creepers Four, by the way. Awesome as always. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, we should probably mention that uh, I released Creepers Part 4 this morning as of recording this. Actually, we, right? w- they, well, we watched it last night. I watched, <laughs> last, yeah, I watched last it last night. night. Our, our daughter as well, because she's into Minecraft. Oh, Mine, awesome. Minecraft is huge here. <laughs> but what's by interesting, way, a, even though I'm it's a, a Minecraft... Uh... Wait, you go first. <laughs> oh, even though it's a Minecraft video, it really just was its... It stood on its own, even if it wasn't set in the Minecraft world. It was really a beautiful film. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, that was kind of the goal with it, was uh, to try and just use use Minecraft as sort of like, just a way to get sort of people's attention, but then just do whatever I want with it, um, sort of within the, the, I don't know, the rules of the world, but kind of not really. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to tell a really good story, and uh, whether it be Minecraft or not. Like, originally my idea was like, um, uh, you know, I could like, I was thinking, you know, if I could potentially make this as a Minecraft machinima as well, um, and it'd still work just as well. And then I was, uh, and then, you know, like I reckon it could work is just about anything, even if it's not Minecraft. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you and, definitely succeeded there. And who did the music for that? Um, it's, it's kind of a mix. So, uh, most of Creepers part four was actually music that I did. Wow. Okay, good. Yeah. Impressive. Um, it was beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, I think I, I got uh, Andrew Stein to do one song in part two, and then the rest is all kind of like stock music that I've uh, that I've collected. A lot of it's from the uh, the Film Riot Cinema Crunch pack, which is a really, really good I've found. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, there's several things that stood out. Uh, there was It was raining a lot during the... the um, the film um yeah and you did you know did some of it with special effects i'm assuming like uh, after effects or whatnot yeah um, um but you also did the real um water um like on the windows and things like that is that correct yep yep and what do um, you go ahead yeah well that's that's uh that's it's it's literally like i i bought like a detergent bottle and uh uh and emptied all the detergent out of it one night <laughs> um just so i could use the the spray bottle for water mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I just spray it in between every one or two frames. I'll just spray it with a bunch of water uh, and that creates a little droplets and, uh, hopefully doesn't destroy my desk in the process, which it has a little bit. Cause I have like all these little, little bubbles of where the water's soaked in. Ah, um, uh, yeah. I was going to ask <laughs> yeah, this, like, so, how, how was the cleanup of getting all that water done after you shot a scene? Yeah. Well, it, it, uh, I got used to it after a while. Like at first I start, I tried, um, putting down like glad wrap over the desk but i think that like made it worse because then the water just kind of got trapped underneath it when it got through the cracks um so now i just kind of move as quickly as i can and then as soon as i finish the shot i take all the sets off of them leave them to dry out and then just wipe down the whole desk um because there'll usually be like a a sort of a a thin film of water on it by that point okay another another shot i really liked was the at the very end the river uh flowing that was really cool I liked that apart, and uh, yeah. the the marching creepers. I guess mainly at the beginning when they're coming up to the wall. Um, how did you do that? 
Um, that's all an After Effects composite. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got 18 creepers uh, that I animate as sort of a plate in front of a, a green screen. Mm -hmm. I actually used a red screen for those ones because red is opposite of green on the color yeah. wheel, so it, <laughs> it contrasts better, um, I've found, uh, for, uh, for when you want to do uh, chroma key. Uh, so, and then... I kind of, uh, it was, it was a mix of like motion tracking and just sort of eyeballing it, uh, to create, you know, sort of like a 3d plane and, and after effects, it's, it's all very nerdy, but, uh, um, uh, well, I guess we're on a Lego brick film as podcast. So yeah. So we're all, all nerdy, fellow so, yeah. nerds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was all in after effects, uh, just vanilla after effects, no plugins or anything. All right. Well, it looked um, like there was thousands of them. So was, that was a cool effect. Yeah, it was it was a lot of uh, Command D to, to duplicate all of the layers <laughs> and then just sort of like place them in the different spots. Um, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just now starting to learn how to use After Effects, and uh, I'm starting to like it. It's kind of cool. Mm, yeah, it's it's pretty powerful. I'm still I'm uh, like Creepers actually for me has kind of been like a, a learning curve of After Effects because like I used it a bit at the start, but I look back at like what I did at the start and uh, the way, like the effects are okay, but like the way that I did it was just really roundabout and took me way too long. Now I just sort of, I feel like I've sort of streamlined the process a bit and I kind of know what I'm doing, sort of. I've still got a lot to learn, but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Um, so we'll move off of uh, Creepers for a minute here. So you're a full-time student, is that correct? Yeah, I'm studying uh, Bachelor of Film and TV at Bond University. Okay, and is that in Brisbane? Uh, just south of Brisbane. Yeah, Brisbane. yeah, just south at a, a place called the Gold Coast. Okay. Um, so it's about an hour away from Brisbane. So south, okay. So I yeah. guess, and it, is it pretty warm there? Uh, I'm assuming you're pretty much in the tropics. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty warm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's January, so it's summer here. So you go to like maybe Sydney to cool off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't been to Sydney for a while. Uh, uh and do you uh, do you like live in a, a a dorm or what type of? Um, I lived in uh, I lived on on campus accommodation for the first two semesters mm -hmm. that I was here. Uh, I'm starting my third semester now. Um, this is I think I'm up to my second week now. Um, and uh, end of last semester, I, I moved off campus to a to a share house with a couple of friends. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I could just, because the, the one thing about being on campus was that I couldn't cook my own food, uh -huh. which was uh, kind of annoying because like I, I, I kind of got sick of all the on-campus food after a while. Oh, wow. Uh, I can understand. And also, yeah. And it's also, great the uh, first week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also I, uh, I animate in the garage now instead of my bedroom, which is kind of a first. I realized that the past seven years that I've, that I've been animating, like the past, yeah, six or seven years, I've always animated in my bedroom and, uh. Uh, the past couple of months have been the first time that I'm not actually animating, like right next to my bed. So, I assume that helps a lot with space and. and yeah, definitely. Yeah. Did, yeah. Cool. Cool. Did it? Did I mean? Was it? Did you have any you know brick filming type issues by trying to animate in your room, like um, light or? Yeah. Well, we didn't have air conditioning. Well, there's no air conditioning in my uh, uh, bedroom at the share house that I've moved into. So mm -hmm. it was really, really hot. I mean, it's much better in the garage. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, space as well. Usually like the space between my desk and the bed is like less than a meter. So, um, uh, that's, that's, that's always kind of been a bit of a problem. And like, so, and so when I'm, when I'm making stuff, I tend to get really, really messy and all my Lego sets, I'll pull them apart, but I don't really have time to sort them. So I'll just have like a big, I usually use like my green screen or something. I've got a big uh, two by three meter just piece of fabric, and I just throw all the Lego onto that, so I can bunch it up and, and stick it in a box uh, <laughs> when I'm not animating. Okay. Plus, when you're if you're animating in your uh, bedroom and your bed's right there, it might be too tempting to take a break, lay down, and uh, <laughs> go to sleep, and that's the end yeah. of that. <laughs> so I assume yeah, that's, that's that is where you uh, filmed Thack uh, Thirteen. Uh, wait, which one was that? The, the last did we one. Just do the one. The last just... one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last. Yeah, that was in my garage. Uh, I've got a behind-the-scenes video that my friend is editing right now, um, so yeah, we'll be able to see how we did that. Alrighty, and uh, that was a, a co-production with Sean. Yep. Wharton. Yep. And, yep. Uh, Sean Wharton. Um, yeah, I've been talking to Sean for like 
about three years. I was in the Bricks and Motion chat one time and he said something about being in Brisbane. I'm like, hang on, I live in Brisbane too. Like, that's like there aren't many brick filmers around here, uh, which uh, I'm always kind of jealous of the people over in Los Angeles. So, yeah, um, we are on like the this. same page. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, that was a co-production with Sean. He handled most of the, uh, well, so basically we all came up with the idea, uh, within like the first hour or so, uh, spent a couple hours just building stuff. And then I animated for, uh, probably like 10 or 11 hours straight. And then I just sort of crashed and Sean did the edit and okay. then I got up and did the sound and, and, uh, it all kind of came together at the end there. You see, now we're jealous of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what, what place did that get? Um, fourth. Fourth, okay. Nice. Yeah. Figured it was yeah. going to make the top three, but it didn't. Um, mm. It was one of my favorite three. Um, mm. it, it was it was pretty close this year as well. Like there are a lot of really really good ones. Yeah. I was I, I was totally counting on on Rio as one, um, which didn't end up getting first because uh, I really liked that one. His was in my top three also. Um, yeah. And believe it or not, the one that got tenth was a, another one I liked. Um, I liked. Oh uh, yeah, the Mr. one with Caron. the the. the uh, the little worms. Yeah, yes. I was. Yeah, I really liked that. One. I was surprised it, it, it. I was figuring it was going to make top five, but and surprised mm. it got only or top tenth, three. But you know, mm-hmm. is what it is. Mm. Um, yeah. Everybody judges I'm, I'm their own big, way. I'm a big fan of classic space anything, so um, <laughs> so that was really really cool to see that. Yeah, yeah, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. Mm. Um, cool, cool. So we've gone into that um, and. You, you mentioned you do uh, you have done some other animation besides brick filming. Um, one was the um, uh, YouTube Heroes. Um, any other things like 2D um, or? No, not really, actually. Yeah. I think that's the only sort of thing I've really done outside of brick okay. filming. I'm, I'm looking at getting into doing more stuff. Like I've been looking a lot at uh, uh, foam puppet fabrication, all that, all that sort of thing. Okay. Like, um, so I'm hoping to sort of try to have a go at, I don't know, uh, professional kind of stop motion kind of stuff. Um, cause I'm a big fan of, uh, like Leica and the stuff that they do. Do you think you will, uh, get into some live action stuff? Um, well I am sort of doing that already cause, uh, for my degree we have to make some stuff. Um, I've found that I don't like it's, it's fun, but I'm not sure I enjoy it quite as much as stop motion because like having the pressure of all the other people there on the set sort of, um, makes it feel like I'm a bit more bit more rushed than when I'm doing stop motion where you can just sort of take your time and make everything right or uh, or just like sort of move at your own pace okay true yeah, yeah that's true mm. um, we'll go back and going talk, talking about um, university can we get into how did you earn the scholarship through a oh, yeah. filming? because yeah, that, that so, is uh, really really uh, that that's really impressive and wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. So I did a series called adventures of Lego Minecraft. Um, yeah, I've been basically just been doing Minecraft stuff for the past three or four years. Um, uh, but yeah, no, that series I did, uh, four visual. So I did that as a five part series and then I did, um, one extra thing as sort of a, a film for my visual art course in, in high school. Um, and I entered that into a film competition called BAFTA, which is the Bond University Film and Television Awards. And the the big prize for that was a scholarship, like a fully paid scholarship to uh, study film and television. And ended up getting that last year. So uh, that that's just so why I'm amazing. here at university now. So, yeah. I mean, what an accomplishment. That is just, you must have been so proud. Yeah. Well, it was, it was pretty crazy. I like wasn't really expecting that because... You know, like all these people, they had sort of, you know, serious drama, live action films. And here I am with like my, my Lego Minecraft brick films. So, um, but yeah, no, that was, I was pretty stoked to get that. So then you're there in this room and they announce you and then you have to get up there and <laughs> like, were you even prepared? You have to say um, something, you know, I'd like to yeah, thank well, my... <laughs> <laughs> I got up on stage and I actually, uh, like... Uh, I'd won a couple of awards before then. So by, by the time I actually won the big one. Um, uh, I had nothing to say, so I actually, and I was like that surprised that I actually swore on stage in front of everyone. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. Let's so now, wait, do you, do you actually play, um, Minecraft video games as well? Um, not for a while, actually. Uh, 
yeah, no, I, I used to play it quite a lot back in the day. Um, but, uh, but lately it's, uh, I don't know, I just haven't had much time to actually play many video games. I've been spending more and more time just making stop motions. Yeah, we understand that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into the geeky tech talk. What kind of camera do you use? Uh, Canon T2i or oh. 550D. Okay. Um, well, actually, uh, I recently upgraded. I, uh, I got, uh, well, not really an upgrade, but I got a, a 700D, which I think is a T5i or 6i mm-hmm. um, in America. Um which, as far as I can tell, is about the same level of quality as the T2i, but um, my, my T2i, I've been using it for three or four years at this point, and it's starting to get a lot of sort of dead pixels, and I'm yeah. really worried about the shutter giving out because I read somewhere that they only have like 125,000 um, like lifetime uh, shutter uses or something like that, uh, and I'm pretty sure I've probably met that quota by now. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just waiting for that camera to break. But for now, I'm using a uh, uh, a newer 700D. Okay. What kind of lenses? With a flip out, uh, just the kit lens usually. Kit lens. Although uh, for Thack, um, Sean introduced me to his macro filters, and I really really like to using those. So I'm probably going to get some macro filters soon. Okay. Okay. And uh, what are you frame capturing with? Uh, Dragon frame. And is this on a Mac or a PC? Uh, PC usually, although my PC lately has been blue screening a lot. <laughs> like the uh, the end of Creepers Part Four was a bit of an uphill battle because my my computer was blue screening daily, Ooh, uh, brutal. and it still is if I'm trying to use it. Yeah, yeah. So I actually had to come to university to edit the whole film. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm probably gonna get a laptop or something soon. Uh, whether that be a Mac or a PC, I haven't worked out yet. Uh, okay. And uh, you're editing and compositing, or done with what Adobe? Yep, all Adobe, Adobe okay. stuff, okay. Uh, Premiere, uh, Creative Cloud, okay. and um, and After Effects. All righty. Yeah. And you, uh... I recently have started doing audio in uh, Pro Tools because that's what they teach at the university. Okay. So, mm. yeah. I think some of our first Brick Films, we used my Pro Tools setup uh, to do some of the audio recording, but it was just so much easier with the Zoom. Um, mm. we, we switched over to the Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, and what kind of lighting do you use? Um, I, uh, right now I've got two big soft boxes, just some cheap ones that I got, uh, that I got off of eBay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's basically what I use for most of my lighting that and usually one or two little desk lamps. I've got like one little desk lamp, which is kind of, kind of cruddy, but, uh, uh, it usually does the job pretty well. Those LED bulbs or other? Um, no, the uh, the soft boxes are just they're like five fluorescent bulbs stuck fluorescent. into into one uh, lamp head, and then just a big sheet of of uh, I don't know what you call it, like just a opaque mm-hmm. white filter, and it's it's really diffuse. It gives all the Lego sort of like a, a nice sheen along the edges, and makes it look sort of really crisp, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, do you have any special backdrops, or um, I guess you're for either landscape like looking stuff or your blue green screen red screen um no usually i just use whatever i have like usually i use a a poster card i've got lots of blue and black poster card uh that i that i use for sky backgrounds uh for the minecraft series uh the old one that i did adventures of lego minecraft i i ended up having to build I bought like a thousand little green tiles and built lots of little like miniature mountains and stuff. And now I use those for uh, I use those for the whole Creepers series as sort of forced perspective mm-hmm. uh, landscape in the background. Okay. Do you have a Do you use a tripod um, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I use a tripod. Do you use uh, it for, for every shot? Much everything. Or do yeah. you sometimes put the camera on the table or? Um, no, it's pretty much always on the tripod. Okay, and is that um, on the floor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and usually if I want to do a dolly or something, uh, either I'll have the tripod on a piece of post-it card, or lately what I've been doing is I actually just move the whole set because uh, I do like to do a lot of camera movements in my in mm-hmm. my animations. Okay. Um, your process for creating your brick film storyboards. Um, I, I notice you do a lot of storyboards with um, uh, uh, sticky notes. Yep. Yep. And uh, um, yeah. My bedroom right now is still covered in all of the in the whole storyboard. Like just one whole wall is covered in the storyboard for Creepers Part Four. Um, 
which was like something like 80 storyboards or something ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I, I usually, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll write, I'll write the script. Uh, I'll do that in like cell text or something. Uh, and then from that, um, I'll get audio recordings and then I'll do post-it notes for the, uh, for the storyboard. Um, sometimes I do an animatic lately. I haven't been doing that for creepers part one. I did an animatic, um, where I actually got some temp audio or I got all the voices together and actually, and I made the music ahead of time, um, and sort of cut together a, a rough thing. I think for my next animation, I'm going to do that again. Um, because I think that worked really well. Uh, but yeah, from there it's, uh, Oh, and the other weird thing that I that I do is uh, I like to sometimes for timing, like when I want to know how long a shot is going to be before I actually animate, uh, I'll make uh, a little sort of a little clip in, like I'll, I'll have my edit timeline and I'll make a little clip with just some text saying what it is and then I'll just sort of imagine in my head what's going to happen there. I'll be like, ah, it'll be about this long and then just cut it. And so, and so I'll end up with like a big timeline full of just little bits of text and slowly what I'll do is, and I, as I animate each shot, I just replace that text with, with the shot. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting process. A lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Extra work. And is there, a, is there the, a benefit to using the, the sticky notes um, as opposed to just a piece of paper? Is you, you like maybe change something or? Um, yeah, well, uh, I mean, I've got, a, I've got a thing for sticky notes. Like I really like. I really like them for some reason. Um, and yeah, just like being able to swap them around and, and everything, I guess, is, is the main benefit. Um, a lot of my older storyboards are actually just draw boxes on a piece of paper. Um, but uh, it's, it's usually just much faster to, to use sticky notes, I've found. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Um, how, many, how many hours a week are, are you able to um, uh, dedicate to uh, mainly brick film? I know you're a full-time student, but are mm-hmm. you... You know, uh, weeks that um, you're in school, weeks that you're out of school. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's. Uh, I've found that I really don't get to do a whole lot of animation while I'm actually in school uh, during the semester. Because um, uh, I've, I've found, like, I'm, I'm, I've had a lot of trouble sort of finding balance, I guess. Like, I, I, uh, when I animate, I tend to just animate for a couple weeks, like, just straight, just go straight through and try to, like, meet a deadline. Uh, so I sort of animate in leaps and bounds, like the last couple minutes of Creepers Part 4 I, I did um, probably like three weeks ago, but I've got stuff, you know, that I did in the in the previous holidays and the holidays before that. So usually it's just my holidays that I uh, lock myself in a room and, and animate <laughs> instead okay. of uh, doing, I don't know what you usually do on holidays. Um... <laughs> Not usually animate. <laughs> yeah. Um... yeah. Well, for me, that is my holidays, so... <laughs> Um, Got to do it when you can, especially when you're in school. So, yeah, definitely. And I see it's a uh, now Wednesday there for you. So happy Wednesday! Oh yeah, happy Wednesday! <laughs> but it's still Tuesday here, so no spoilers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a favorite uh, Lego um, set? Um, series? Anything classic? Anything classic space? I love classic space. I. Uh, there's a store in Adelaide, which is a, another city in, in Australia um, that my fam that my parents are from, uh, that they, they sell a lot of classic Lego stuff. And every time we go there, uh, I'll get a whole one. I'll usually get you know like two or three more classic space figures. Mm. So I actually have like forty of them oh, cool. um, at this point because we go pretty much every year. Nice. Um, so yeah, classic space. I just really like them for some mm. reason. I don't know what it is. I used to watch a lot of. Uh, 70s and 80s sci-fi TV shows like Jerry Anderson stuff with my parents, so maybe it's got something to do with that. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I could find one of those um, the old, uh, I guess, Moon Crater uh, base plates. I had one mm-hmm. when I was probably 10, and who knows what happened to it. Mm-hmm. Those, those are really cool. Um, how do you sort your Lego? Um... I haven't actually sorted my Lego properly for a couple of years, so it's a bit of a mess at the moment. But I've got, I've got two big towers like with five drawers in each, and I just sort of sort it by category. So I've got uh, in one, I'll just have a drawer full of like little tiny, tiny bits um, in like in little pockets, and then another one I'll have like all the flat pieces, uh, like plates and stuff. And usually, usually it's kind of like that. And then I, and then I kind of, some of them are a bit sort of more fudgy, like um, you know, I've got like a 
I just kind of worked with the enough with the amount of drawers that I have. So I'd have like a, a Technic and big walls uh, draw or something like that. So I'm probably going to resort my Lego collection soon, but man, it takes a long time. Yeah, it I does. understand. I one day want to sort by uh, part or uh, piece, and but I think I'll be by color for quite a while. Let's see. Uh, how many frames a second do you normally shoot? Uh, 15 usually. I've occasionally dabbled in, uh, shooting 24 frames on twos. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I might give that another go soon. Man, I'm talking a lot about the stuff that I want to do soon, but, uh, but I, I have just finished my last animation. I'm thinking a lot about what I want to do next, but yeah, 15 is, is the usual. Okay. Okay. And, um, uh, when you're animating, uh, or uh, how many shots a day do you think do you get or about how many, um, uh, seconds an hour do you think you do? Ooh. Uh, totally varies, uh, particularly when I'm doing these animations, which have up to, you know, like 18 creepers to animate and that sort of thing. Um, it can be anything from like a second an hour to, uh, I've, I think my, my record for a non thack day is 40 seconds in a day of animation. Um, but that's like, that's like an 18 hour day of just like mm -hmm. no breaks. Um, uh, and a, and a really hard deadline to meet, but, uh, um, yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I think like I'd like to think that I could do about ten or twenty on average a day. Usually, it ends up being between like five and ten. So that seems yeah. about average. Yeah. Yeah. So you've worked with um, Sean of Brickhead. Um, have you worked with uh, in person with any other brick farmers? No, nope. uh, I know Keshen Eight lives sort of near me, so I Ooh. might be uh, meeting up with him soon. Tell him um, we said hello. <laughs> Yep. He's another okay. one. I've I've never heard his uh, real voice. I mean, he's oh, he's yeah. not not how he normally speaks. He does so many great uh, voices mm. like for four. So yeah. I've heard all of his, um, you know, different voices. But no, I don't think I've ever heard his like real talking, speaking voice. He did something yeah, a while come back. Come to think of it, I don't I don't think I've really heard it either. <laughs> uh, I love I love his Joker voice though. It's, it's great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He does, like, great American accents and, and everything. He's just very, very talented voice actor and obviously very talented yeah. brick filmer as well. But, yeah, mm. so maybe we should get him on just so we can, yeah, just so I can hear him talk. Mm. <laughs> so Sean's the only one you've, you've actually met in person? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Have you been out of Australia? Um, yeah, I've, I've traveled with my family a bit uh, to America. Uh, both east and, and west coast and uh, right before I started university and just after I finished Lego Minecraft Creepers part three I went to Europe for three weeks um, with my friends okay. uh, and we just sort of and we just travel around. Nice. Did you have a favorite part of, uh, part of America that you went to? Um, Yosemite National Park was was really really pretty. Okay. I found yeah there was, this, there was we were there and it was like a, a 40 degrees Celsius day um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it was it was really hot. That's hot. Uh, yeah, and but because uh, there's snow in the mountains and it melted, there was this freezing cold river that we could dangle our feet in. Okay. Uh, which is which is really really nice. Um, so yeah, I've got fond memories of that place. Okay, and what about Europe? Uh, Europe. Uh, I was in Switzerland for a week, uh, which was really nice. Uh, actually, in the in the Swiss Alps. Did you go to um, Luzerne? Uh, Lausanne? Lu yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess that's how you say it, I don't know. There's yeah, a big well, lake I went, there. I went to a place, there's a couple of places that have like a similar sort of name, so it might be a bit of a, uh, we might not be talking about the same place, but I, I, I did go to a place called Lausanne, uh, which is just a, it was a ski village um, in the Swiss Alps. Maybe I mispronounced it, Lucerne? Lucerne. No, I don't okay. think I've been there. Okay, it was a big lake there, I don't know. Took a boat ride, there or it once. could be Lausanne. Lausanne. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's, it's they they have like three different na national languages there. Um, mm. So you um you you have uh, composed some of your own music for your brick films. That's correct. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, when you animate, do you listen to music, podcast, TV, or anything? Yeah, uh, all the time. I uh, I found that sometimes I can't even animate until I until I just start listening to something because I I just I just feel really sort of lethargic, I guess. Um, uh, I like to listen to podcasts a lot. Um, I like uh, uh, it's probably not so family friendly, but I, I really like listening to one called the Comedy Button Podcast. I'll have to um, look it up. Yeah, um, and uh, and lately I've been listening to a lot of. Uh, um, uh, 
a podcast by a guy called Chris Oatley, who's a, he used to be a concept artist or something for DreamWorks. And he, he interviews a lot of uh, uh, people in the animation industry and storyboard artists and stuff, and that's been really inspiring to listen to lately. Uh, that's the Paper Wings podcast and the Artcast, which okay. are really good. And, uh, and I've been listening to your podcast uh, um, as uh, the episodes have been coming out as well. Yay. And we finally got it up on uh, iTunes yesterday. Yeah, yeah oh, so that cool. was exciting. Like that was actually kind of a pain. Uh, it yeah. was, it was, uh, there was a lot of steps, and you had to do it just right. Otherwise, uh, the iTunes wouldn't accept your uh, submission. Um, but uh, after yeah, a lot of trial and error, like <laughs> a, a error. lot yeah. of trial and error. Oh man, that sounds like a nightmare. I've actually been thinking about doing a podcast with a couple of film friends uh, at university, but uh, uh, I don't know if we do iTunes if it's if it's going to be that much. <laughs> Honestly, uh, you know, if I had someone I could ask, uh, I probably could have figured it out a lot quicker. But uh, yeah, it, it's not so bad. You just have to have certain ducks in a row. Okay. Okay. Um, do you remember what your first brick film was? Yep. Um, I well, the first the first brick film I did. Uh, okay, so I used I used to be I used to watch uh, like later animations on YouTube, and I and I watched Forest Fire One and Ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, animations and it was particularly I think it was um, uh, Killing Darth Vader was the video that sort of set off something um, and so I, I looked up on the internet you know like oh, how, I want to make I like I want to make that um, so so I looked it up and I remember the day I found um, uh, I, I found like a like a how-to article on, on how to put together frames in Windows Movie Maker mm-hmm. uh, for animation and it was like some crazy thing where you're like First, you change the duration of all the pictures to 0.25 seconds or something. But then the trick was you add like a double speed filter to it. So it's like 15 frames per second um, or something like that. Uh, and yeah, I made two brick films in, in the one day and they're both terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like so bad that they're not even on my old channel. Oh, they're on no. the second channel. <laughs> Neither are channel. ours. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah yeah we all have like, those alt channels that we put the stuff on that is just not good <laughs> yeah, enough yeah mm-hmm. in the dark corner of the internet exactly where no one goes <laughs> but occasionally i'll point someone and be like hey this is this is where i started well, that's cool um, that's cool you know i used to i used to really really suck as well <laughs> um, yeah, everybody's got to start somewhere yeah do, do you have a yeah. favorite um, go ahead um no you go. I, I forgot what okay I was do you, say. <laughs> sorry do you have a favorite brick film that you have created for yourself Yours. Um, hmm. Favorite one that I've made. Uh, usually it's it's the latest one that I've made. I Creepers guess 4. Like, Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'd have to say, though, Creepers Part 1 is the one that I'm probably most proud of because I, I feel like I really sort of got the process right in that, um, where, I, where I really took my time with that. All the other ones I feel like um, aren't quite up to the same sort of standard. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty happy with them, but I, I feel like Creepers Part 1 was was the one that I definitely poured the most energy into. Okay. Um, in terms of, well, actually, no. I probably put more energy in the other ones, but I, I feel more sort of satisfied with that one. Okay. Are you partnered on YouTube? Yep, I'm partnered. Uh, I have been for a few years, so, yeah, it... I, make a, I make a little bit of money off okay. of that, which is, which is good. And is it with YouTube towards... or um, a different... Yeah, just with YouTube. Just with YouTube? Um, I haven't joined any networks or no anything. Networks. I okay. probably won't. Okay. Um, so I believe you won, um, FAC 10 and 12. Yep. And you might be the only two-time winner. I'm not positive about that. Um, uh, and you obviously won something, uh, in order to get your uh, scholarship. Is there any other, um, other, um, awards, awards you, that you've won that we've not talked about? Um, uh, the, the same film that got me the scholarship, I actually entered into a, uh, statewide art competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, called Creative Generation, um, and it actually ended up going on display. Uh, it was it was picked as like one of 150 student works to go on display at the local modern art gallery for for the whole city, which is pretty cool. Wow. So, so my film was actually uh, the Lego Adventures of Lego Minecraft Part Six was projected onto a wall in a modern art gallery, and people would come down and, and sit in front of it, and it was really really cool to see. Because well, uh, awesome. I just sort of incredible. like walk in there. And like stand behind, like uh, I noticed there was a lot of parents like coming in, just sort of like parking their kids in front of it. <laughs> they catch, or they they catch the end of it, and then they'd sit down and watch the whole thing through. And like that was really really cool to see. Awesome. Um, 
And then occasionally someone would be like, oh, that's Minecraft. And then someone else would be like, what's Minecraft? And then they'd <laughs> explain the whole thing to them, uh, which is really interesting to see. You know, that might be a good uh, money-making idea. It could be a, a new babysitting tool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the kids, I mean, I'm sure everywhere, but definitely in this country, Minecraft is huge. Young kids, mm. I mean, it's amazing that our daughter even is into it. Um, mm. Just, they, they all love it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I think a lot of the people who watch my videos actually are really young kids, um, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Do you um, make any Lego mocks? Um, not so much, not actually. So much. Like, uh yeah, I just kind of build the sets that I need for my videos. I, I feel kind of bad because I have so much Lego uh, that I that I don't really get. I haven't really been creative, like just building stuff out of Lego for quite a while. Um, I think that's something I want to uh, try building. I want to build some spaceships. Mm. That'd be fun. Well, you, you have the sets for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know you just finished your last project. Uh, have you started the next one or, um, or yep. just in the um, thought process? Yeah, I've, I've been thinking a lot about what uh, what I want to do next. Like, I've just done this whole series. It's it's the the second time I've, I think I've done like a full series that's taken me like over a year to finish. Um, and like, you know, uh, good logic would be to go, I'm never doing this again. This is way too much work to be locked into this one thing for so long. But then like a couple of days ago, I'm like, ah, oh, I should do a classic space uh lego series of brick films that would be really cool because i've been watching a lot of like bravest warriors and adventure time and that sort of thing lately and i'd I'd really like to have a go at doing uh something like that where i can just sort of but keep it in a way that i can just sort of do whatever i want with it uh in different episodes but also sort of tell a story like i do with creepers well that sounds awesome i don't know it's yeah it's um i've just been i've been talking about it with a few people and like i've already got a few ideas that i'm really excited about um, the trick is, uh, I'm full time at university now, whereas with Creepers, the first three parts were done pretty much in the gap between high school and university. So, um, you know, whether I can, uh, whether I can work that into my daily life sort of is, is the question, I guess. Maybe you could figure out how uh, to make yeah, it a the, college project. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's, uh, coming up actually the, so the film program is two years, um, and they have, uh, trimesters. So there's three semesters a year. Um, and I'm on my third one. In about a year's time from now, I'll probably be doing my graduation film. Uh, and I, well, most people, they do sort of a dramatic uh, live action film, but I don't really want to do that. I think I want to do a stop motion film that uh, cool. for that. And that'll, uh, whether that's, that'll probably be claymation or puppets or something. Um, but yeah, so I've got, so the two things I'm thinking about at the moment are a classic space Lego series and then whatever I want to do for this grad film in a year's time. Well, at right. least the classic uh, space thing will keep in, uh, in, in line with your original Lego spaceman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind, yeah of, kind of pay homage oh, to your original that. name. Yeah. Oh man. I can probably even use the character from that in the show. That'd be interesting. See? Yeah. <laughs> so for our listeners out there, is there, um, are there any brick filming tips you could share? Um, Hmm. Uh, in, in terms of just like getting into brick filming and sort of being creative in general, like I, I really feel like it's important to, for people to sort of make stuff. Um, and I think with, uh, with brick filming or, or anything creative really is like, um, basically to start something that you can finish and then follow through with it. And then as soon as you finish that thing, start something else straight away because, uh, uh, and that's, that's how you get better at making stuff. Uh, is just just by making stuff, I guess. Uh, people worry a lot about ideas and you know coming up with something really good, but I think it's more important that you just sort of stick with something and and see it through and see how it goes and treat it as an experiment. Like uh, you know, everything that I do is a learning experience. Like I've I've learned a lot about you know After Effects and cinematography and that while I've been making Creepers, and then before that it was you know it was, it was all about. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just been, it's, it's just been a slow process of just sort of learning bit by bit, just by making stuff. So just, just make stuff, um, make animations and, and finish them. That's, uh, that's the main thing and use lots of blue tack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, do you have any, uh, other interests that are non-film related that, uh, you'd like to share? Ooh, 
Um, I, I got into game design a while back. I was actually, uh, I, for a while, I actually decided I wanted to be a game designer. I wanted to program games and stuff. So um, I actually, I was, I was making like a little 8-bit platformer called Trippy the Cat um, uh, that uh, in, in my lunch times at high school, but uh, uh, decided that I preferred film and, and ended up getting a scholarship okay. to come and do this. So yeah, pretty much my main hobby at the moment is just doing stop motions. Okay. Um, and yeah, I like to play a bit of games, but not so much lately, like yeah. we uh, like we mentioned before. So. No and you, you, um, you did, had Zach Macias um, consulted somewhat on uh, Creepers Four. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So Creepers Part Four, I was I was having a bit of trouble sort of wrapping up the story mm-hmm. uh, uh, because the way with that series. Um, and this is what I'm talking about, like how I want to plan the next one really well. It was because with this series, like I had all the beats for each episode, like all just dot points of what was going to happen. Um, but so I was like writing the script for each episode before I made it. Um, uh, but the the problem with that was when I came to part four, like I kind of like I knew like I knew sort of the ending that I wanted, but I couldn't work out how to quite get it across and zach really really helped me out with that okay. um i sent the script to him and he sent me back like the whole last scene is actually uh based on zach's idea okay. um and i just sort of took that and ran with it and i'm i'm pretty happy with how it turned out uh, and, and a lot of people in the comment section seem to really like it okay. as well cool, yeah cool. it and was he, amazing he works kind of in the gaming industry is that correct or do you know yeah he's uh i think he does cinematics for telltale games okay um, uh, which is, or he's, he started that recently, um, which is pretty cool. Like, <laughs> um, that'd, that'd be, uh, I wonder if he's actually, I don't know, I don't know what games or anything he's working on. Like, he hasn't gone into detail about okay. it or anything, but yeah. Are you guys going to get him? Get we him? hope yeah, so. Yeah, we so. definitely want to add him to the he's, list. He's one of our favorites, so uh, we definitely yeah. would love to talk with him. He, uh, he's yeah. been inspiring for us for uh, quite a long time. Oh, absolutely! His his animation is gorgeous. He's I'd, I'd rank him up in like the top five brick filmers in terms of like just how you know, how smooth and, and and just how pretty their animation is. Agreed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I'd, I'd I'd love to work with Zach at some point one day. Like, there's all these people that I'd I'd really like to work with, but uh, sort of being holed up in Australia is uh, uh kind of doesn't really help with that. Well, we're in the same country as all these other people, and we're still yeah. holed up in on the other, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Side of the country, so we yeah. uh, don't get to see them or work with them either. Yeah, but I've been talking a lot in the uh, in the Bricks Emotion chat re- recently about um, just like collaboration and you know like what would it take to set up like a stop motion studio, uh, you know, rent some space in in Los Angeles or something and, and just get like, or get in Atlanta. In. You know, the yeah. person, <laughs> the, the, the people to talk to about that would be uh, uh, Tommy uh, Williamson and uh, James Moore. They have their they have a real legitimate uh, stop motion brick filming studio because um, mm. they stopped working in their garage when they mm. got all this uh, commission work for the uh, brick Lego brick documentary and uh, um, actually yeah I guess and uh, they, they're doing some other stuff for Nathan Sawawa. So how do you say his name? Uh, uh, I'm not going to attempt it. Sawawa. Sawawa. I don't know. He's <laughs> like, like he's like Mr. But we're with Qu- you. Qu- we're Qu- in the garage. We're all alone. Nobody comes to visit <laughs> us. Uh, yeah. Dusty garage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I should talk to them, actually. James was the one that actually referred me to um, to Kevin to do that Tube Heroes Commission video. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I should actually, I should probably ask them about that because that would be really cool. Um, I also noticed that they uh, they said something about them working nine to five. Uh, Isn't that each nice? Day. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's it's nice to have a a, a work schedule like that. Um, you know, they do put yeah. in uh, more hours on the uh, when when there's crunch time. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, with stop motion, you don't want to put yourself in a in a hurried mode and just to know you're you're just going to get a little done every day and just keep trucking. Yeah. It's it's a wonderful thing. Um, do you have a favorite uh, voice actor that, from Brick Films? Um, I don't know. Uh, well, we talked about Keshin before. I really like really mm-hmm. like his stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy range. with the. I'm really happy with the voice actors that I got to do. Um, uh, that I got to do stuff for Creepers. Like Chris is great, and uh, and Andy is is just something else because he's he's he does he's a music producer, so he, he does singing and stuff, and like. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know if I have one particular favorite. I know I know there's a few that I'd like to work with, like Keshen. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe I'll get them to do some stuff on my uh, on my next series. Nice, and mm-hmm. I'm I'm going just totally silly off topic here for a minute because I know personally whenever I um, think of Australia, the first thing that comes to my mind, being the female and lover of cute things, is um, our koalas, <laughs> and it is on my bucket list to hold a koala. Have you ever held a koala? Yes. Oh, I've held a. Now I'm really jealous. <laughs> I've held a baby koala. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I yeah. heard they were mean though. They're not oh, mean. They're pretty nice. They're, they're, they're nice? pretty docile. Okay. Maybe they it's spend the like eighteen hours of their day just sleeping. Oh, what a life! I, I think I could yeah. literally sit there and hold it for eighteen hours, especially <laughs> a baby one. Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing! Yeah, that's definitely yeah. a bucket list item. Also, uh, do you drive cars? Um, I'm. I've got my learners. I still need to get quite a few hours of. It's it's kind of difficult because I live on the Gold Coast and my family is is up in Brisbane, which is okay. like an hour away. And by train, that's that means it's like two and a half hours away. Uh, but yeah, I've I've uh, I've had my learners for like a year and a half, and I haven't actually got my hours up, <laughs> um, which is which is kind of a bit slack. But hopefully, in, in the next few months, I'm gonna um, just just set aside some time and and uh, really make sure I, I get my license so I can <laughs> drive places. Oh, okay. uh, it's just like riding a bike. Yeah. No worries. And you guys, <laughs> you, you guys drive on the left side of the road. Is that correct? Yep. Yep, we're weird. We drive on the left side. So, so what was it like, uh, I guess, when you were in America, or I guess Europe too, um, taking that first mm. right turn? <laughs> um, I don't know. It was kind of scary. Well, yeah. I mean, like the age that I, that I was when I was in America the first time, like it didn't even occur to me, okay. that sort of thing. Like it's, it was probably scary for my parents. Uh, but for me, I'm just like, oh, I'm yeah. in the passenger seat. We're yeah. in America. This is cool. I, I, think- I went to Japan once, and that first left turn freaked me out. <laughs> I think what got me when I, because growing up, my family's all from England, so I, you know, spent a lot of time going there um, as a child, and I think what got me the most was I would always, when crossing the road, look the wrong way first, like here, you know, you look to the right, to the left, and I did it opposite there, which (laughs) that to me was the hardest thing to get used to. Yeah, well, that's that's funny, because that just reminded me of a video that we watched in in primary school. where it's like, it was this big bearded guy and he had a song that he sang with the kids where he's like, <laughs> you look to your left, you look to your right, look to your left again, quick march, straight across the road. And that's like just burned into my brain. So oh. <laughs> that's in my head every time I cross a road pretty much. Oh, you kind of just have to keep looking back and forth a lot because like, oh, I'm not sure which way I'm supposed to look first. So just look again and again and again. Yeah. Better be yeah, safe well, than I, sorry. I, 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 yeah, I get kind of anxious when I cross roads, so I do this thing where I just like sort of spin my head around quickly like I'm a meerkat or something and then dart across the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Well, I think um, we've pretty much covered all the questions. Unless there's anything else you would like to mention, we will uh, make sure that everybody has the links to find all of your uh-huh. amazing work. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, check out my YouTube channel, which is uh, Fall On Creature. Um, and uh, Twitter account as well, which is also Fall on Creature. Uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter usually, uh, so if you ever want to ask me questions or, or send me anything, um, Twitter's usually the way to go. Cool. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Um, yeah, cool. so I guess that's it. Um, really appreciate you taking the time and staying up so late uh, to talk <laughs> no, with it's, us. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Really enjoyed yeah. hearing you speak, and... It's been great. Thank you so pleasure. much. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's it my pleasure. It's really nice to, to speak to you guys. It's, uh, I'm a big fan of you guys and your work. So well, thanks. Well, thanks. appreciate that, yeah. and we'll look forward also, to. I'm a, also, I, I didn't get to say it before. I'm uh, I'm a big fan of your daughter's work as well. <laughs> oh, um, that's doing sweet. animation at such a young age is is so cool. She will be thrilled to hear that. Hmm. And. Uh, yeah, no, she enjoys it. It's neat to see. It's amazing that she has the patience that she does to do that because it definitely takes a lot of patience. So we definitely, mm-hmm. um, you know, love it that she enjoys doing that. And, uh, yeah, she'll she'll be more of a help, I think. Yeah. She's about halfway through yeah. uh, one she's working on right now. Hopefully uh, we can get, it, get her motivated to do the second part. And she does them for school as well. She has these projects that she does, <laughs> um, these little contest thingies that they do. So uh, she, she usually will animate at least once a year for that. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I really hope she keeps up with animation yeah. because uh, I think uh, starting early as well is a, is a big part of sort of getting really good at animation as well, if that's something that she ends up wanting to do. 
Yeah, um, I agree. It, anything creative, especially for young kids, is, is a wonderful thing. Cool. So we will look forward to seeing the rest of your things. <laughs> Thanks. And, uh, uh, I look. For, I look forward to the galactic smugglers. <laughs> I will. I will endeavor to keep keep working on them. I just. I'm working um, pretty much as a full time job doing brick filming, and I'm just a little less motivated on the weekends now to uh, work on my personal stuff. So do you? So are you guys actually? Uh, is that like? So that's your full time job now. Is is doing commissioned work? Pretty much. Um, we've we're. We're on retainer, uh, working with uh, Oyo Sports, doing the uh, yep. sports-related videos, um, and they keep us busy, pretty much, you know, nine to five, nine to six, you know, seven thirty to six thirty, whatever, every all yep. all week. And I get to the weekend, and um, I kind of just would rather hang out with the family instead of go down in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's 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 really cool because uh, that's probably something I'm I'm. Uh... I'm interested in doing after university is just seeing if I can do commissioned animation for, for a living for a while. Um, well, it seems to be very popular, a growing thing that more, more people are doing and more companies are yeah. wanting. So, I mean, which is great for brick filmers. Yep. And, uh, maybe some, you know, in a, and then in the future, we'll maybe have another conversation with you after you've made the big time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, definitely we'll happy we'll to, see how I go, but <laughs> happy yeah, to awesome chat to again to though. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. And uh, and good night. <laughs> good night. Sweet good dreams. <laughs> you too. All right. All right take Bye-bye. care. Thanks to Thomas for staying up late to chat with us and being so generous with his time. And thanks to everyone who stuck with us through this entire podcast. Please check out our sponsors and partners on the Brick Filmers Guild homepage. And don't forget to check out Forlorn Creatures Amazing Brick Films on his YouTube channel. We'd also like to thank Kevin McLeod for his wonderful music, which we use for our podcasts and in our brick films. So until next time, bye, y'all.